Greetings and welcome to SmartWatchTix.com. We're a YouTube channel dedicated to all kinds of smartwatches, in particular those based on the true Android operating system, most of which now are running Android 7.1.1 inside. These watches have all started to gravitate to tethering to a phone using one specific app, and it's called the WII Watch 2. So this video has two parts. It's a tutorial on how to set everything up with your brand new Android smartwatch for tethering. That's coming a little later. And there's a couple of new features in the updated version of this app for those of you already connected and those of you about to get connected that you're going to come on back and watch so you can take advantage of these features. Those features include the ability to transfer files from your phone to your watch, and at the very end, at the very end, I'm going to come back and show you how you can actually get apps onto your watch from your phone after you've downloaded them into your phone and backed them up so you can get the backup files and send the files here so they can easily be installed. You're going to want to watch that. But any kind of file, pictures, sound, music, um, video, you can transfer from within this app now to your watch when you're tethered. We're going to show you that. The other thing we want to show you is the ability to use the keyboard in your phone to put data in your watch. Oh man, this is great. It's been really hard with a big fat finger to type on a little teeny keyboard on your watch. Well, now you can type on your phone and using the Bluetooth tethering, send it into the text field of whatever you're trying to fill out on your uh, watch. We're going to show you that too right now. So let's begin. We got the app here. We're looking at the Google Play Store. There's a link in the show notes. You can just click on that or go to play.google.com, hit the apps tab and put in Why Watch 2, find the app, download it to your phone, however you get it in there. Once you're there, and it's installed, you can hit open. When you open it, you're going to be in this page. You're not going to be tethered like we are right now. Like I said, the full um, review is coming up later, a tutorial that'll begin by showing you how to connect. Let's presume you're already connected like I am, because what I want to do is skip this whole page, we talk about that later, and take you over to this page. This page has something new in it now. For those of you who watch this review or are already familiar with it, auxiliary input and send file are the two new additions. As I mentioned before, I can hit send file and it'll take me basically into uh, my root uh, where I can go into the phone memory, mass memory, or my SD card to pick out a particular file and the ones I'm going to show you at the very end will be residing in this thing, App Backup and Restore. And they're archived. And here they all are. And just to grab one for fun, how about the A Better camera? I click on it, have the check mark right there. I hit this little arrow, and boom, it's going to send it over here to the watch. Where does it go? Let's find out, because that's important to know. When you're on the watch, you want to slide over and find File Manager. When you get into File Manager and you look at all of your memory and you tap in here, you're getting all the folders that are here. Well, after you've done it and after it's transferred, this app is actually going to create a folder in here at the very, very end because it starts with a W. Y Watch Files. When you go into here, whatever app you transferred or music or pictures will show up. Now, I happen to have transferred this app because we're going to use it in a demo in just a minute called speechnotes.com or whatever. This is what's called an APK. The APK file is an encapsulated program. It's not running on the watch. It's kind of the envelope that has the program in it. That's what happens when you download from the Google Play Store on your phone. You get the same thing, but it automatically installs it, and then you get the program running. Well, when you back that stuff up, you can get those envelopes back with everything in them. We transfer them over and that's what we've got here. When you tap on this and your watch is set up to accept um, programs or apps that, to be installed, you can hit the install button and it'll automatically install that app directly into the watch from that APK file. Okay, I'm gonna review that at the very end. 
um, so that you can get these things in your watch without having to go through the Google Play Store all the time. You can get the canned ones that you really like and you've used on your phone. Boom, move to your watch now with this app. Okay, so when it's in here, and this one is, I can scroll down and it should, after you install it, show up. And there it is, called Speech Notes, all right, on this one. Now we move to part two. You okay on the file transfer stuff, how that worked, right? I'm in uh, the area to transfer the files that I got to when I hit send file. Now we're going to talk about this auxiliary input thing. This particular uh, app now is a great one for demo because it's something I could hit this microphone on and I could speak into the watch and it will transfer my speech into text right here in the note field. Or... I could go into the square vision of the app and notice that I have a keyboard down here and I could tap the keyboard and I can bring up the keyboard and I could try to type my note here on the watch. So, so far we're totally independent. I got voice input and I got keyboard input in a little note app. Those notes with this app I could save and I could send out on email or whatever but it's really, really tiny, really, really hard to, to do that. So what I could do now is the other feature, auxiliary input, and I can enter whatever I want, including voice input on my phone, like you're watching Smart Watch Ticks on YouTube. There we go. <laughs> it gets everything I go. All right, there's some text. Now, watch carefully right up here. You see that area there? I'm going to hit confirm. And everything I just typed just got transferred over here. Hit done. There's my note. You like that? Isn't that awesome? Not only that, you can add to this if you want to. You can come back into the auxiliary input. Cancel that. Well, there's no clear button. Doggone it. Here we go. I guess we got to... Get rid of it that way. A little bit of extra things. It'd be nice if you had a clear button. And then you could type in whatever you want again, or you could speak it however you'd like. And when you hit, watch there, confirm, it gets added directly to the note that you're working on. Or the uh, input in your Google Play Store, or the information you're putting into an email or a text message, or any kind of text that you want, as long as you're in the field, you use that auxiliary input and it can uh, move that stuff over. So there you go. Two brand new features in this upgraded Y Watch 2 app, the send file and the auxiliary input. Now, what about the overall function of this particular app and how you set it up with your particular watch? Well, here we go. This is the full tutorial. What we're going to do now is take a look at the tethering of this watch to its support app, which is called the WII Watch 2. Now, this is really new technology as well. So we got a lot of new things going on here. It says that this app is going to replace the Yware and the Y Watch, and that's all we've talked about on most of these Android uh, watches uh, for the tethering capabilities. And these are going to go away. So not only this one, but probably all the Android watches that have been using these apps before are going to migrate to this new Y Watch 2. Well, I guess we should study it and see what it does. Bluetooth has been started. We need that. And you come open to this particular busy page. It's uh, actually this tab here. And if you slide it over, you're on that tab there. And this gives us some other information. We've got to look at all of that. But before we begin, we have to make sure that we're tethered, right? And that's where we hit connect. You see here, it's going to open up this window for looking for a QR code. And as we saw on the watch, in all of the apps, there's one called Assistant. So when you tap on Assistant and go to connect the phone, you get the QR code and you hunt for that thing, get it in focus, and there you are. Simple as that. Now it's waiting for a connection. Now I get this notice, says please give YWatch2 notification permission. 
Say okay. And that is down here. And it's got notification permission now. And now we're connected. I got 46%, it says. How does that match up? Come back to the watch face. Down here. Over here. Okay, looks about right, 46%. So we are paired, we're connected. It also has brought in my step count, which if I come up here, should show me the step count of 1661. And of course, the kilometers, 1.2, and 71.3 kilojoules of, of uh, energy. And 10 minutes was one of the... Um, events that I tried to record here earlier. It also is showing a heart rate last one of 54 beats per minute, and that's in the health section. When I tap it and I go in here, look at all of this. I've got the step count we just saw, the heart rate I just uh, showed you, and now all of the different activities. Here's running. Please check the watch data. Look at that. It put us into outdoor run. Here's walking. Boom, it switched us over to outdoor walking. Okay, here's rope skipping. And now we're into that one. So dynamically, these things are linked together. And all of these different selections are available, you know, by scrolling this way or available through the app. Let's come back here out of health. And by hitting that back tab, and look at dials. I'm going to bring this up. Now, remember when we were looking at the dials and we press and hold and we go all the way to the very end, there's that little plus sign and you can add them one by one. Well, here they are, the same ones. Oh, I like that one. I'm going to download that one. Look at that bounce. Look at it go. And now it's been downloaded on here. It's in the watch. Okay, now at this point, I got to tell you, I've loaded this for bear and I got a whole bunch of my watch faces in there. Oh, good, good, good. I'm glad it bounced over to it because I'd have to scroll for like a hundred <laughs> to get to it. There's the watch face and it's just now been downloaded. These are all the Christmas ones. And then there's a bunch of other designs that are available. And of course, these are coming from a server. So as they add these uh, or update, uh, and add more of them to the server, they'll show up in here over time. A lot of those Christmas ones were just added, Christmas of 2017, and these are a whole bunch of new ones now that are going in there. As we saw before, you gotta wait a little bit for it to download, to get installed, to resequence them all, and to show it. And there it is. Wow, it must be right at the top of the hour. Is that true? Or do I only have one? No, I guess that's the hour hand and minute hand that are displayed on there. Interesting. Oh, what's that? Google location history. These are notifications that we uh, we have in here too when you go to the left. So you have all these watch faces and more. Oh yeah, that's a cool one. Look at that. Let's bring that one in. And many, 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 many more. It's downloading so we don't need to see that anymore. We can go ahead and show some of the other pages worth. There you go. Very cool. All right. And of course, press and hold lets me slide through them any which way you want and get all the way to the end where I could add them as well by tapping that plus and it should come back up here to the top of the list and start showing you all of the uh, the watch faces one by one. But this takes a lot, lot longer to do. Nice that you can do it directly from the app. And hey folks, this is the new WII Wear Watch 2 and so all of this stuff is going to be available for all other Android watches that support the Y Watch or the Y Wear app, as this is the new replacement. Yahoo! Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get out of here, back to where we were, and let's take it now to the next page. Over here, personal settings. You can set your goal uh, for your step count. And I usually do 8,000, hoping I can get to 10. Music control can control either your default music player or Google Music, look at that, or QQ Music, that's totally new. Lookup device, I think that's, uh, yep, making it make noise so that you found your watch. That's to find my watch, the lookup device. Raise the screen to see the time if it's off, 
and you twist it, it should show you the time. Of course, I had it turned on on the watch that way, so maybe they're counteracting each other um, since you can set them both ways. Silent mode is the same thing as, you know, going in here over to here and turning that into silent mode or not. And then app notifications. This is where it gets creative. This is where you're going to specify which of the apps on your phone you want to uh, send notifications to your watch. It's going through now and, and indexing all of the apps that I have inside my phone to present the list to you. And then there they are. And they're all turned on by default. So if I don't want flight aware, I just take a check mark off of it. If I do, I put it back on. There's doesn't appear to be one grand switch that you can turn them all off or all on. Uh, so by default, they're all on. And then if you get annoying notifications too often, here's how you would go through and, uh, and disable that or turn it off. Okay, app related, how to get support. Takes you into the round Android watches pro boards. Cool. This is the tech team that we are connected with here at Smartwatch Ticks. And oftentimes I give you an answer. If there's something too technical for a question that comes in, I say, go join the pro boards and ask the experts there. Yeah, that is cool. The app automatically directs you to the pro boards for the round Android watches uh, forum to get support. Feedback, where you can send feedback directly back to these guys. Software updates in Chinese. Now, I'm not sure if it's checking for the update to the uh, app in the phone. Oh, look, it says go to Google Play. Okay, and that's just taking us right back to where we were, and it's currently updated. So that's just a link back to the uh, Google Play Store, it looks like. But maybe if there's an offline one, uh, you could get the update there. And then overall instructions, which again is taking me into my browser and giving you information from Y-W-E-I-T-E-T-E-C-H dot C-N and, and this whole long link here. I'll copy this and put it in the show notes down below. You can go there directly if you want to. Um, and that'll give you access on your computer or tablet or whatever to this page and maybe more information as well. Oh, okay. So far, that's everything about this app. Wow, lots of cool things going on. This page shows you this stuff for your connection. This thing called Intelligent Watch. I didn't think that was clickable. It doesn't seem to be. Okay. The health section and your overall dial information. Pretty simple, huh? Great, thanks for watching. And now, as I promised at the very beginning, I'm gonna give you an idea of how you can get apps into your watch. Normally, you have to go through the Google Play Store to download them and get them installed, but you can do it what's called sideloading by transferring them from your phone to your watch over Bluetooth from within the tethering app. Here's what you need, though, are those backup files of the actual APKs of the uh, apps that you have installed on your uh, phone. What I do, and I think what a lot of people do, is they choose their favorite backup app. When you put in App Backup in the Google Play Store, you get a bunch of them, and I've used them all. App Backup and Restore, this one with the arrow with the little Android is a nice one. Backup and Restore by itself is the one I've got in here on now. And then this older one, App Backup and Restore, easiest, blah, blah, blah. It looks like a folder. That one works as well. Um, but you can uh, pick your one. And this was the one I'm using. So I'm going to go in here right now. And it, it shows you a little bit of information about it because I'm in the Google Play Store and I'm going to open it. Now, when you have the app open, and it gives you some ads you're going to have a list of all the apps you have inside. If you click this check mark here, you can either back them up in this particular app directly to the uh, phone, in which case there's an update to this app itself that uh, it's going to back up. All these others are already archived. You just hit backup and whatever's waiting will be backed up. 
Now I'm guiding you through this quickly because you need to do this and then it's going to have ads and it's going to do all of that stuff. And that's just part of it. When you've got it all archived, now we're actually ready to do the transfer. So the first step is put in an, a backup app in your phone and backup all of your apps, or at least the ones you can check mark which ones you want, at least the ones you're thinking of transferring over to your phone. By the way, you see this is how push notifications come through on the watch. This is actually um, an app that's running on the phone sending a notification that it's running so it won't time out in the background. And that's how you clear your notifications. Okay, we covered this. Now we've got to get back into the WII Watch app. I'm going to switch over to that. And let's see, there we go. Uh, I'm still connected to the watch. And I want to get over here to that file section. I can either do that or I can tap that. Same thing as going over here and go to the SIN files. Now, once again, to walk you through this, don't need to do anything, anything at all on the watch except have it on, all right? And I suggest that you set the timeout for a long time, maybe 30 minutes or something, and leave it on. If it times out, you might lose the connection. Um, either touch it occasionally so you make sure it stays alive or set the time temporarily uh, for a long time. You need to get to that backup folder that you created with your app backup uh, app. And I just go into mass memory. Yours may be set to the SD card, in which case you'll find it there. But look for the folder that it creates. It's usually something like this, app backup and restore. It is going to have a bunch of stuff and look for archive. That's where all your apps are. Notice I got several of them, like this one radio news. Well, these are different versions, and that's what's so cool. Whenever there's been a, an update through Google to any of the apps I have installed, invisible to me in the background because I have it set up to do it automatically, it's okay. The app is also set up to automatically archive the new revision. So if one comes out that just throws a bunch of ads in, and I like the other one that was earlier, I can always go back and install the earlier one to my phone and get rid of the new update one and work from the backups. Another nice feature has nothing to do with tethering to the watch and transferring files, unless, for example, you send over one of these and it doesn't format nicely on the watch, you could try an earlier version until you find one that does. Easy Voice Recorder, one of the best recording apps you could use on your watch is that way. The earlier one's laid out beautifully and you even have a gain control you could slide on here to adjust the uh, volume level of what it's recording from whispers to rock bands and not have distortion and pick up everything. But then they buried that in a menu that you got to go into the square and it's harder to get to. So having an earlier version of some of the apps is really beneficial. You got them all. You got them all. Me, I love this one, uh, one plus six T. Look at how smooth that is. Unbelievable. You, if you want to move an app over here now, you just pick one. Some of these are network ones, so I don't want to move those. How about NPR, National Public Radio? I touch it, I get a check mark. I could put more than one if I want to. Uh, open camera, there's several of them. Let's take that one. So I've selected two. I hit the button down here. It says it's that big. It's going to take 51 seconds, and I say OK. Now, one thing I don't like is I'm not getting a progress um, on here, so I don't know how long it's taking or how well it's going. There, it says it received one of them. You saw that? notification. Look for a notification or feel your phone for a vibration. And when it's been transferred, um, you'll be notified on your watch. At that point, then you should be able to slide over into file manager, slide all the way down into the folder. And there's the open camera one that just came through. And it's probably working on the other one still. And remember, you have access to all of the uh, watch faces that you can put in. By the way, I found that this doesn't necessarily update. Even when I pull it down, I'm not getting an update. I thought this might show you, you know, the updating of these, but it hasn't. And what I've actually had to do to get some of these, like all these new ones that uh, Tim and Pierce uh, Collins created, these ambient look-alike things. Remember the ambient one looks like that when it comes on? 
Well, these guys designed, I got a video out on this, you should check it out. These guys designed that exact same watch face and they're now uh, being picked up by the servers. So they're even available through the WII watch uh, app. But if they don't show up for you initially, go back and uninstall the app and then reinstall the app and let it go back and, and load everything up from the server all over again. It's a little glitch, but that's a workaround if you want to get access to things like these watch faces that uh, otherwise might not appear on yours. Alrighty, that's it. Thanks for watching. This is SmartwatchTix.com. If you like what you're seeing here, if you're finding this helpful, please help us out. Subscribe. Give us a like, a thumbs up on the video, tell your friends about it. And if you see a watch that we are talking about here and it um, tickles your fancy, please consider using the links we put in the show notes down below to buy them. Our sponsors send these out for review and their return on investment is when a few of you guys actually buy the watch. And that helps everybody out. And it keeps us going with new watch technology for all of 2019. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. And if you've been directed here from a link in a video on how to tether your watch, now you know.